So let's have a lesson on this piece by Torega. And um, this piece is actually available on the site as an individual selection, but this lesson is for my grade four repertoire lessons book. Um, in the book, compared to the, the separate score, the book has a couple of pages of lesson material um, to prepare you for the piece. And so this lesson is covering that material. Um, there's a link for that book and the individual piece underneath the video. But um, if you already have the piece in another book, you can just follow the lesson for free and pick up all the tips. Um, so this piece has a very strong melody. So the first thing you probably want to do is just um, play that melody on its own and learn to shape it. Um, in this case, I'm going. It, I have the melody written out as a single voice. Um, we're going to use the same fingers that are used in the piece when playing that melody, which might seem odd when you're playing it on its own, but uh, it does prepare you to play the piece. So let's cover that melody first, trying to get it nice and legato and, and shaped and phrased. So you just want to make sure that you have that nicely covered because when you add all the accompaniment in, you still want that melody to be as high quality and legato as possible. There's also lots of opportunities for like little um, um, non-chord tones that resolve, so and then strong resolve, so like um, tension release or tension resolution, right? Strong. Start again to so ease in. Strong, weak, weak. Arch the phrase and relax. You know, making sure you taper the ends of the phrases and things like that. So, um, one of the reasons I included this piece in the grade four book is that the piece afterwards is Lagrima and there's going to be lots of barre involved. So, this is a good, um, smaller piece to work on your barre and get it under control. And it's a little tricky in this piece to go from this. I'm sure many of you will find that a little bit tricky to go from this position and get a solid barre with this finger um, position involved. So we're going to practice it in three ways to help your barre and help this section of the piece. By practicing in the three ways, um, I think you'll be able to get a handle on it. You can watch my separate videos um, from the lesson page on the site to um, get my lessons on barres themselves um, and tips on barres. So I'm not going to talk too much about that in this lesson, just more about specifically this piece. So the first method is just a way of preparing the piece. So we'll start. Pause, two, three. At, during that pause, we're going to prepare our fingers and the shape of the barre in the mid air. So not touching the strings, but just put our fingers into the air to prepare and then when we actually play the next bar we'll just drop into the chord shape. So you'll have three beats to bring your hand over and prepare. This is just a way of practicing. So I'm, I'll count those three beats but watch my hand prepare for the bar. One, two, three. Let's do that again. So this is just a good way to set your technique and your hand up. Um, in, when you play faster, of course, you'll have to jump into that shape, but you know you need to start somewhere and this is a great way to just prepare that barre in midair and then just come straight down into the frets. So that's one way of practicing. Here's another way. Um, this, this way um, is just the shape recognition. So we're gonna play the chords as block chords. And I have this written out in notation and chord diagrams um, in the book, right? So this way is hard, but you can go as slow as you want, right?
Um, you can even like mess around with it. You know, just to kind of like spice it up and get used to those shapes, right? You can make it kind of fun in your own way. But just basic shape recognition, the ability of your left hand to recognize the shapes you're playing and to jump into them um, as quickly as possible, just like chord strumming and stuff like that. So just be able to jump in. That's This method is not good enough for classical music if that's the only way you practice, but it's one way to practice that you can add to other ways to make it more legato later. So the next one is more connected to the legato aspect. This is destination points. In this one, we're going to just aim for the, the two notes that you actually need at the beginning of that shift. So the idea that like getting the whole shape is actually not usually necessary um, when the notes are coming one at a time or two at a time, right? From this shape, the only notes you really need are the A and the B. That's, the what, that's what happens on the downbeat of the next bar. So practicing getting into just those notes and then getting the bar A fully afterwards or whatever notes are remaining in the bar A is really important. And you could do the bar A when you grab those two notes, but you don't need to grab the D sharp just yet. You know, just getting used to getting those next notes will ensure that you're actually legato in the piece. So that's the main thing I wanted to cover. It's like playing the melody and playing those chord shapes. And you can do that for the rest of the whole piece if you like, but that's definitely the, the trickiest part. So let's do a walkthrough of this piece. I'll just talk about it. Of course, um, you're going to bring out that A finger and bury these fingers. So, you know, that's your primary um, musical line. And then the M and I fingers, you just bury them and suppress them. They're just accompaniment. So when, you, when you're going through that, you do the bar A finger. recommend in this case that you you know you try to reach out a little bit in this piece to try to connect as much as possible that bar a in the middle of it really disconnects the piece so you want to ease into it by getting those primary notes and then try to get that top B luckily it's on its own a little bit of vibrato is nice but then taper that off softer ease in That, that chord should be an afterthought. Soft. Not, you know, cranking out that just afterthought accompaniment. Second half of the piece, um, keep highlighting that, that top line. Um, you can do a glissando if you want. I don't, I try not to add too much of one to make it, you know, I don't want it to be too sappy or something, but a little bit is, is kind of nice. rubato at the end of this because there's no easy way to jump from here to here. Um, although the third finger is right there so you can kind of track it down on the first string. Making sure you get those just that note and that note before getting the whole chord. You could grab the whole D7 chord but it's not really necessary. Get that note first, and then the rest of them. This is one part of the piece where you, you should hold that bass note and actually reach your finger out to the B. Some of you might find it hard to reach that B when you're holding that note, but bring your thumb pretty far down on the neck. Like my thumb is like is like right here at the moment. It's really down so I can reach that. And I've got pretty small hands, but I could reach quite a few more frets. But you do want to kind of hold that bass note. And ease in. And just lay your fourth finger across those notes for the harmonics. 
Um, again, there's really just that one little thing to practice in this piece. The rest is just legato connection as much as possible. But I think by going through those various ways, you'll accomplish the piece very nicely. This is very similar to other pieces that you've played before, but it just includes that bar A. So the next piece we play will be Lagrima by Torega, and it'll be a little bit more difficult, so I, I want you to make sure that you've accompl accomplished this piece very successfully before moving on to Lagrima, because that one's going to require just a, a little bit extra. <laughs> 